Welcome to the National Archives and Records Administration's 2024 Genealogy Series. My name is Erin Townsend, and I am the coordinator for this year's program. We are so happy you've joined us. Every year, the National Archives hosts the Genealogy Series, a free educational genealogy event broadcast on YouTube. Our presenters are records experts from National Archives locations across the United States. The sessions offer family history research tools on federal records and are open to everyone from beginners to experienced family historians. All are welcome. We invite you to join the conversation. During each session's premiere, you can participate with the presenters and other family historians via live chat. Ask questions and get the presenters answers anytime throughout the video and for an additional 10 minutes after the presentation ends. Here's how to engage in the live chat. You can ask questions via chat by first logging into YouTube. Continue to watch chat because the speaker will answer your questions there. Type your questions at any time throughout the presentation. Please keep your questions on today's topic. We are offering five genealogy sessions on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time, starting May 21st and ending June 25th. We will not have a session on June 11th. If you miss a premiere broadcast, please know that videos and handouts remain available online after the event, where you can view them at your convenience. Welcome to today's presentation titled Captured German Records Related to American Prisoners of War During World War II. Our presenter is Rachel Salyer. Rachel is an archivist at the National Archives at College Park, Maryland, also known as Archives 2, and a subject matter expert in modern military records. Rachel started her career at the National Archives as an archives technician in the textual research room, and then became an archivist in textual processing. Since 2019, she has served as an archivist in the augmented processing section and in the reference section of the Archives II Textual Records Division. Rachel has a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and German from Oklahoma Baptist University, a Master of Arts and a Doctor of Philosophy degree in German Studies from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and a Master of Science in Library and Information Science with an Archives concentration from Simmons University. Before joining the National Archives, Rachel worked as a professor of English composition, literature, and German at various colleges and universities in Massachusetts. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's genealogy series presentation on captured German records related to American prisoners of war during World War II. Today's presentation will start with a brief overview of the captured German records in Record Group 242, the National Archives collection of foreign records seized. Then I will share some examples from the largest series of records related to American prisoners of war in this record group before discussing a few smaller series as well. After that, we will look at a few records related to prisoners of war in other record groups, and we will close with a quick look at additional resources. First though, we'll look more broadly at record group 242 to provide some context for the prisoner of war records. This record group is known as the National Archives Collection of Foreign Records Seized, and as the name suggests, it consists of records that were created by countries other than the US. The German documents in Record Group 242 were primarily seized during World War II. Most of these documents were microfilmed in the decades following the war, and the original records have been returned to Germany. NARA has custody of numerous microfilmed copies of these records. Information about the largest collection of captured German records on microfilm is available on NARA's website. These microfilm publications include records related to various German government and military organizations. You can also use the National Archives catalog to explore Record Group 242, 
by browsing available records or by searching for a particular name, office, or other keyword. Many series in Record Group 242 have already been digitized and can be viewed online using the catalog, and many more may be added in coming years. In addition to textual records, you can also use the catalog to explore photographs, sound recordings, maps, and other holdings in Record Group 242. As I mentioned before, the vast majority of the textual records in Record Group 242 are microfilmed copies of original documents that have been returned to Germany. One notable exception is the records that relate to American, or in some cases allied, prisoners of war. The Geneva Conventions that governed the treatment of prisoners of war during World War II also included provisions for tracking information about those prisoners. This information was exchanged more or less regularly throughout the course of the war. And then after the war, documentation about prisoners of war was generally given to the prisoners' countries of origin. That means that records that the US kept about German prisoners of war were returned to Germany and records that German officials kept about American prisoners of war were handed over to the US. That brings us to the main series that we'll be discussing today, the card files pertaining to American prisoners of war, or entry NM44279 in Record Group 242. This series consists of 86 boxes of card files related to individual prisoners of war. The majority of the records are arranged alphabetically by name of prisoner. Although the records are not currently available online, they have been digitized, and so they will be available in the catalog soon. And I should add that this catalog link is on the presentation handout with links to the other series we'll be discussing today as well. It is important to note that although this series does contain a large number of records, it is not comprehensive, so there may not be a card for every American who was held as a prisoner of war by the Germans during World War II. Once the digitized files are online, though, you will be able to search or browse for individual POWs. Much of the information on these cards is also available through other resources, like the Prisoner of War database that I will discuss later in the presentation. The series includes a variety of different styles of POW information cards, but some of the most common details on the cards include basic personal data, as well as service information. Some of the cards even include fingerprints or photographs as well, as we will see in some of the examples we'll look at in a minute. These records are in German, but because they are mostly standardized forms, they are fairly accessible to researchers who do not read German. First, let's look at this example of a POW card for Louis or Louis J. DeBella. You can see the basic layout of the form here. Although there are some incomplete spaces on the back of the card, most of the information provided here is fairly complete. This card includes personal details, military service data, contact information for next of kin, and camp assignment, which in this case is OFLOG 64. You can also see the fingerprint and photographs on this record. The second example is a card for James L. Doyle. This one is on the opposite end of the spectrum with very few details filled out and no fingerprint or photographs. It includes the prisoner's name, rank, POW number, and camp assignment, but not much more. This third example for Pascale Grinalde shows a different type of form. There are fewer details here, but the basic personal and service information are provided, including birth date, birthplace, rank, date and place of capture, and more. A small section at the end of this series is arranged by POW camp name or number. This card for Francis Bessler at Camp 13C includes a typed English copy of the form too. Most of the cards in this series do not include this type of translation, but as I mentioned earlier, these standardized forms are still fairly accessible to non-German speakers. And when the digitized records are in the catalog, they should be searchable by prisoner name. 
So that was a quick look at some examples from the main series of American Prisoner of War records in Record Group 242 that will be digitized and in the catalog soon. I'd also like to share a few additional examples of similar, much smaller series that have not been digitized yet. Since these next records haven't been digitized, you will likely need to plan a research visit to the National Archives in College Park to view the series. You can always contact the Textual Reference Branch with questions too. First is a small series of POW personnel cards that is also arranged alphabetically by prisoner's last name. So it is very similar to the larger digitized series of POW cards. As you can see from these examples, this series includes a wide variety of prisoner of war cards. In general, these cards contain fewer details overall than the main series, but the information is similar, personal and service details about individual prisoners of war. Next is a series of photographs. These are mugshot type photos of individual prisoners. Unfortunately, the photographs are not labeled, so we do not know the names of the individuals in the images. Most contain a camp name or number, along with a prisoner of war number. Here you can see a few examples that show the prisoner of war number and camp name. This series has not been digitized, so you would need to visit Archives 2 to request these records. Record Group 242 also includes a few small series related to individual camps, like this one for Stalag 10B and 12A. Within these series, you will find similar POW information cards for individual prisoners. Like the first example of a small non-digitized series that I shared, the cards in this series also tend to include fewer details than the main POW cards in Record Group 242. Many of these cards do include notes or English translations though. So those were a few examples of other series in Record Group 242 that include information on American prisoners of war. The National Archives also has custody of other records related to prisoners of war during World War II. We'll take a look at some of those resources now. First is the World War II Prisoners of War data file. If you are looking for information about an American POW during World War II, this database, which is available for free on NARA's Access to Archival Databases, or AAD website, is one of the first resources we suggest to researchers and family historians. It is part of Record Group 389, the records of the Office of the Provost Marshal General. The image on the left of the slide here is the main search page from the database, and the image on the bottom right is a cropped example of the results for Louis or Louis J. DeBella, whose Record Group 242 card was the first example I shared earlier in the presentation. It is important to note that the database, like the World War II Prisoner of War cards in Record Group 242, is the record itself, and it does not lead to additional textual records. This is not a name index to other records, it is the record itself. Next, although we are focusing today on American POWs held in Germany during World War II, I also wanted to mention another useful POW database on AAD, the World War II Prisoners of the Japanese file. It includes similar information to the Record Group 389 database that I just shared, but obviously this one relates to prisoners held in the Pacific Theater specifically. Record Group 389 is a good source of information about prisoners of war because the Office of the Provost Marshal General was responsible for overseeing both the Enemy Prisoner of War Information Bureau and the American Prisoner of War Information Bureau. These series do not include detailed information about individual prisoners, and there is no name index to these records. There may be lists or rosters of POWs, but these records are, by and large, administrative and policy records and other high-level documents. Most of Record Group 389 has not been digitized, so you would need to plan a research trip to Archives 2 to view these records. In addition to Record Group 389, you may wish to use Record Group 153, the records of the Office of the Judge Advocate General Army to research POWs and POW camps. 
This record group includes multiple indexes that have been digitized and are available online in the National Archives catalog. These are just a few examples. The Stalag Name Index is a good place to search for the names of specific camps. There are also personal name indexes to the European war crimes case files, as well as the Far East files. Beyond this, Record Group 153 also includes place name indexes. The case files themselves have not been digitized, but the indexes are a good place to start if you are looking for broader information about conditions at POW camps or incidents that may have occurred there. If you are really looking to expand your research, there are many additional record groups that may hold relevant records. These are just a few examples. Series in these record groups are also primarily administrative or operational in nature, so you are unlikely to find detailed information about individual prisoners here. But if you want to expand your research to learn more general information about POWs during World War II, these record groups are a good place to start. Most of these records have not been digitized, so you will likely need to consult with an archivist in the textual reference branch at the National Archives in College Park to plan a research visit to view these records. Finally, if you want to learn more about individual service members, there are several different types of records you may wish to explore. First, of course, are the OMPFs, or Official Military Personnel Files, for World War II. These are considered archival records, and they are in the custody of the National Archives in St. Louis. If you are researching someone who was killed during World War II, we also recommend that you request a copy of their Individual Deceased Personnel File, or IDPF. And some of these records have been digitized already and can be found in the catalog, and there are plans to continue digitizing this large collection of records as well. There are also some other digitized records you may wish to explore, like the hospital admission cards that are available on Ancestry.com and Fold3. The missing air crew reports, or MACRs, in Record Group 92, which is the records of the Office of the Quartermaster General, and also various series of headstone applications and internment control forms, and more. More and more records are being digitized, so it can be helpful to check the catalog and NARA's partner websites frequently. So that was a brief overview of records related to American prisoners of war in Record Group 242 and in other NARA record groups. I'd just like to close with a look at a few extra resources. First, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency is the federal agency responsible for ongoing efforts to repatriate American POWs, to locate those service members who are still missing in action, and to identify the remains of service members that are recovered. Other organizations like the Arelson Archives in Germany, the Library of Congress, and the Red Cross may be good sources for additional information about World War II prisoners of war, depending on your particular research interests. Thank you all again for joining us today, and I look forward to discussing any questions that you may have. Thank you again for watching. This ends the lecture portion of the broadcast, but we will continue to take your questions about today's topic in the chat. If we do not get to your question, please send us an email at inquire at nara.gov. Note that the videos and handouts will remain available on this YouTube page and our website. We plan future programs based on your feedback. Would you please take a minute to complete our short online evaluation form? At this time, I'd like to thank the Genealogy Series team who contributed to the success of this program. We are grateful for your work. If you enjoyed this video, check out our Know Your Records program. We have over 100 educational videos on how to conduct research at the National Archives. Although this concludes the video portion of the broadcast, we will continue to take your questions in the chat for another 10 minutes. Please stay if you have questions. Thank you for joining us for today's presentation.